All right, here we go into game three. We'll see. Is Weibo going to run back anything similar? We've got Sejuani versus Skarner. So they are going to go toe to toe with there. We, they opt to go for a counter pick with carries Rumble into the Jacks. Yone is scooped up, but we get to see Knight on Akali. Akali Silas, two of the champions that we expected to see more at this, at this world championship, along with Wei. Uh, in fact, maybe even one of the reasons why Wei doesn't show up is because the prominent picks. Like, there's so many good melee champions into it. This is a melee mid-game, uh, or melee mid-meta. We can have so much explosive power, but we've seen Knight last last two times just say, you know, I can play I can play carry, smolder through into your Yone. I can play Syndra and control space. Looks like they're going for a similar delayed invade like they did last time, but they must have an answer. So I'm going to give props to the coaching staff. If they say, hey, we actually have an answer prescribed for this, ready to go, they are going to move Ezreal into the Kaisa lane. This is heavily favored to Ezreal. Ezreal can stack up his Q, and once he gets his attack speed moving, he is going to win the 1v1. And with this ward down, they get some amount of motion that no one's come out yet. So they, you see Crisp just stepping out of vision before they move forward, and they go in together. So well done for them to get into this spot together. Alistar K Kaisa is going to be an exceptional endgame carry team. Elk, we've seen him able to get pentakills on this champion. So they're set up for success. Light has been playing out of his mind, and I think last game might have given him the confidence to say, hey, like, I can, I can go Super Saiyan. We'll see if Ezreal's the champion for that. I generally don't like it for that position. I like it when you're expecting to, like, have to deal some amount of extra damage. Well... I don't even know. I just don't have Ezreal on the same tier list as, as the other champions. I didn't see all the bans. I will admit. Uh, Sejuani with double melees, right? You always pair this up. It's going to allow for some good formations for them. Later, early gank potential with the, the Frost passive. Later, we're going to see probably Vanguard positions, right, where we have these two that are creating a wall for the Ezreal to shoot from behind. And then Rumble looking to get a good push off. Deals so much damage and then coming in over the top with the equalizer. One of the things that we've seen Weibo do in particular is... Hold on, we'll watch this fight. Garner carries another fight and they get the first blood. You see him turn around and realize, I'm dead. I'm going to go back in and get another hit. Because that hit, getting the first blood, it is the only thing that makes that play worth it. But that is still a huge win. When you get a trade back kill in that spot, enemy team has invested so much to that position that you can expect, like, that's fine. All right, I'm 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 going to be okay. Let's take a look at the replay. So he comes in in time for the cannon, is not able to burn it down, can't spend any amount of that Q on the backside, but does get it rest, does not get the cannon experience. So that's a big deal when it comes to breathe scaling. That early cannon can be the difference between XP diffs uh, the fact that he gets to this lane with the teleport means that he's totally fine. Jack's opting not to use his, but Rumble actually keeps the turret under. Sometimes you expect them to turn around and push this up, but now we have a position where Rumble's four, Jax is not, and you might see Rumble look to to push and try to progress this lane state. Uh, we'll see whether or not they recruit the Sejuani over. Sejuani's coming over despite not having any camps. Wards are already down here and here. So they're trying to prevent any sort of path. Skarno was preventing the third path. Uh, are they looking to try to gank? And is Sejuani just trying to match here? Say, so, yep, yeah, let's take this fight. Skarno versus Sejuani, I'm happy to take this. They're basically just going to pass each other in the night. You see Ezreal flexing on this matchup. There's just nothing Kaisa can do to stop this chain of extra, extra damage coming through once Ezreal stacks up his passive. You can see that it's... It's your mana versus their HP. As long as you can keep that passive stacked and keep on hitting, you will have the push advantage. You will have the damage advantage. And it's all just a matter of making sure that you have enough mana to do it. All right, the play is off on the on the bot side. The presence of Sejuani allowed Rumble to go forward. It looks like Skarner was looking for a potential for a gank and Sejuani had to cover against it. So good job, good teamwork there from Weibo. And they can be pretty happy. Rumble getting about as much as you can hope for from the 1v2 dive. Ezreal getting the huge advantage up in top lane. Uh, they're going to be all right. Which is more than we can say from either of the first two games, right? If you're Weibo, you might be confident in your ability. And you might even say, hey, we're playing really good tempo. We're doing a really good job around the pits. Our game plan is working. But we need to make these fixes at level one. 
right? Level one, level two, level three, these early rotations. If you're BLG, however, the discussion's going to be much more about, hey, look what they're doing to us in these pits, right? Right now, they've only had to react and play counter exploitive gameplay. They haven't had to like stretch that much in the early game. So now they can just make adjustments that they've even done in game. We've seen Bin adjust and we've seen Skarner reposition. Remember when they had this fight and Skarner came over and took the new flank position? They're clearly okay playing that style. They get to make some adjustments to the overall Weibo game plan. Uh, so they should be very strong going into this fight. They've got a lot of lockdown. A lot of CC to trigger the Kaisa and Akali damage. The chasing potential is incredible on this team. It's going to be up to Weibo to get a huge HP lead early in the fight with Ezreal and Rumble. Otherwise, they're just not going to find their windows. Skarner doing Skarner things, taking the fight to Jauhu. Yone stacking up his passive. It looks like they're calling off the play, but they do have Bin invested here. Rumble's coming in later. He does have Equalizer. If Rumble comes in and draws a line right here, they're, they're doomed. Yone scoops him up. This is the first part. Breathe is trying to round him out. Bin just get does get one kill. So they're saying they're powerful. I don't know that they're powerful here. Guys, careful of the equalizer. Right here. Boom. There it is. No, you missed two different angles. Breathe got a little bit trigger shy. Maybe they said, hey, we don't have enough left. Yone's already used his ultimate. We're on <clears throat> retreat mode. But even if you were on retreat mode, Rumble cool, cooldown is one of the lower ones in the game. I absolutely would have loved to see him throw that ultimate. It looks like he was trying too hard to find the perfect ultimate, ends up finding none, and Weibo, uh, Weibo just comes out losing in that in that exchange. Now, Bin does have to teleport to get to this wave. He'll be pushing this out. Rumble can walk back to lane. He'll be okay to pick it up. That is going to slingshot him into the experience lead. You see that he already has an XP lead on the Jax, and he's going to get more because he has a double, almost triple stacked wave approaching him here. Elk is trying to leech onto this experience up on the top side, even though Ezreal is going to be one of the best champions at zoning you off, right? If you ever get to this position. So we they're going to try to break this freeze. And you see on, on, on Alistar, <clears throat> you trade your HP as a support to get through the break. You have to try to puncture this. Trade resources. You're not the resource that matters. Your resources, your HP, to try to get Elk into a better position. I haven't seen that punish yet. That's fantastic. That is such a good job. Having, having Jax and Skarner moving together. Remember how he said that Jax was going to be in a position where he's pushing up. Rumble was going to come over and get the experience lead. Well, he did. But Jax isn't going to stick around and wait for it to happen, right? You get the push in, you roam, you move. There is no vision on the way there, which means that there is no answer to it. They don't they don't see it coming. The very nice collapse. Skarner, Jax, uh, you know, one of the things that makes these champions so good together is that they can hold people down together. Jax can buy time for Skarner. Skarner can buy time for Jax. Skarner being the ultimate source of, of teamfight power. It looks like they're just going to sacrifice Shun here. <clears throat> Skarner playing the ultimate team role and and he knows that he's going to get big off of his heart steal, right? There's nothing there's nothing else to it. He's got the magical footwear, so he doesn't really need to care about anything else. He's going to work. He's just going to keep on getting things done for his team. Be that guy that can that can hold down the fort for the entire team. Buy some space later for the Akali. This formation, I will tell you, this is the champion that I know the least about in the game. As far as like how teams try to position them in pro, it seems like every team has a different approach. It's it's not the same. It's not simple the way like Jax's game plan on Bin. You understand what he's going to do. Push to the maximum, get it to the turret, roam, flank. Rinse, repeat, do it early, do it often, do it every single time that you can. On Akali, I don't... I don't know what to expect. You guys know, you have to let me know. Hashtag strat chat if you know what are these teams are trying to accomplish with Akali. Most of the time it feels like you want to bring no fight to us, that's fine. I will be the super mobile carry that can like clean up these these fights and, and go for it. We'll see what ends up playing out in this game. All right, 10 minutes into the game, we see rotations to mid lane. <clears throat> Carries are over here. Ezreal will still have this advantage. Kaisa is desperately trying to farm up her items. Knight's going to hold this wave here for a bit. Wait till they commit 
by either being or not being there. Looks like she's happy to push the wave here. See the uh, energy going down, right? So she's just trying to hard push this. Might get an answer. It looks like four people might go for the dive. They might just say, hey, no, we're going to trade the three voids. We'll take the dragon. Akali can get plates. This is a great play for BLG. What we've seen this tournament all year, it's been a void grubs meta and snowball. Right? Like it's been snowball off of this, get to turrets, hit turrets, touch turrets, get the bleed, get whatever. In this tournament, We've seen a lot of these top teams willing to just play the outscale game. And we saw FlyQuest do it to, to Team Liquid. And we saw it all year. They've downloaded the Team Liquid style. Hey, all right, you're going to try to snowball. You're going to do this. You're going to play for the Void Pit. We can just set up a team that slightly outscales you and then wait for what Inspired called a hasty, aggressive action. A hasty fight take by team liquid and then punish it and we saw him literally just dangle out his scorpion tail in that series it's just like ah, oh, like oh am i overstepping you want to come get me now i know you want to play high tempo do you want to come get me now and team liquid always bit and so you were able to get odds on plays for FlyQuest over and over and over they got the fights that they wanted they just called out a certain item breakpoint. they looked at inspired and said what is the item breakpoint that we fight at he would, make that he would make that call for the team. They put their resources into quad because it's a mid lane carry environment. And they would look for him to carry, whether it was on Oriana or Yone, and, and go for these plays. And we see much of the same here from, from Billy Billy. They're willing to do the same thing. They know that they have the better player here and here and here. Their carries are better. So you don't need to take risks. Let your carries carry. You don't need to invest anything that, that you don't feel comfortable investing because you will win later, right? That's the call. That's the way that these teams should be structuring. The question will be what happens once you play against Gen G and, uh, and you're matched. Pays Chovy. Like obviously Bins can be a strong point versus Keen, but Keen has shown that he's more than willing and capable to even get kills in a 1v2 in this tournament. So he is playing at a top level form, but I don't want to think too far ahead because these guys need to win this match first. We mentioned earlier, we started talking about if you're a coach, this does not exist. This is the only thing that exists is a win here for both sides. It doesn't matter if you're the losing team and your team loses Oh three, you're still going to have to say something Mensatory, you know, a inspiration for how are we going to do it again next year. Now we know what this tastes like. We're never going to taste this again. Inspire your team for the off season. Again, these are things that you should prepare the night before. You don't want to be in this position where you have to come up with those on the spot. You prepare those the night before. Feel feel where your team's at in the action right now. Both of these war rooms should be anticipating a Weibo win. Otherwise, the series is done. Your job's essentially done. You can go celebrate or you can lament. The only thing that matters is if Weibo wins and you can continue to play. All right, Knight is down basically a full level here. Not, I mean, not a full level. Is down the level, and but it is level 11 versus 10. So he cannot stick around for any meaningful amounts of chunk damage there. Uh, we expect BLG to give the Rift Herald as they have done all series long the difference being that the team fight here from weibo is much better their scaling is much stronger than it was they have ezreal and yone to play front to back they've got the sejuani to match anything that the skarner does and and that that's what leads me to this question what are you what are they going to do with this akali i still i'm still unsure all right rumble all going down perhaps doing it in preparation for a dive. They're saying we don't need the minion wave. Alistar can just walk in, tank it up, presses his ultimate and goes after them. What beautiful exploitation. And I don't know if Breathe just assumed that they were there. He doesn't have a ward down. The call might've been like, and you can see boom, 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 boom. This entire area, they knew that this was an uncontested dive. And again, it was the 14, uh, the 14 minute Herald. We've seen a couple of exploitative strategies. Very few times have we seen skip the wave, go straight to the turret, and dive the level 11 rumble. 
Rumble doesn't have all the tools in the world that, to be able to, si to survive it, and certainly once he puts his ultimate down, there's just not enough damage in the kit to survive that, especially versus Alistar. I love... I love the way that BLG's playing. They're playing so good. They're, they're being adaptable. They're coming up with different strategies. Everyone's playing at a high level. Haven't seen blunders. The pressure's not the best. I'm going to bring you back to that moment we showed you at the beginning of the series. On, as they're stomping top esports, who's put together as a, as a super team, by the way. Like, no, make no mistake about it. Hold on, they're trying to keep on going after this. Ali versus Rumble, Super Mobile can always duck in and out of the fight for as much as they want, even giving over the kill. Yeah, all right, there you go. That's what we want for them. Whew. They've been waiting for this. They want a piece of the champs. They were emoting as they won their very first game of the split against what was supposed to be their top challengers. And it's like, we're not even looking at you. We're looking at T1. We're looking at the world championship. We want a piece. Weibo stole that from us last year. Not, you know, that's something we didn't even talk about. Weibo stole that from them last year. It's the only series that BLG has lost to Weibo was in the world semifinals last year. They may have been guilty at that moment of thinking ahead. What's it going to be like when we get when we get to play Faker? No such mistakes this time. They're just playing at a huge level. Watch this fight. They drag the fight back. This is heavily BLG favored based on position. Knight is taking a significant chunk of damage. Where's the rest of the fight? Rumble does get the teleport in. Now they're all going to be cooking in the pot. They survive just long enough to get retaliation kills. That's absolutely huge for them that they're able to find this. Ends up being three kills. Kaisa and Jax on the list of casualties means that they're going to go for turrets here. I don't like that they're going for this one. This one's meaningless compared to this. Skarner's at zero health. Right, or one healthy one just picked up the um, the cones, or whatever, the juicy fruits. Maybe they still have enough anyways based on just the void grubs. But leave, all right, ends up being fine. They're right. Ezreal being fine down here means that they get both. They get the important one. Maybe it's just spectators showing me the wrong spot. Getting that mid lane turret unlocks the whole map. Now you can start making plays. Now you can start playing for fog. You can start making advantageous roams. Love the start of this. Don't like that it's damage on Sejuani. You never like to see that, but he does end up pulling one over the back, but any amount of damage onto tanks is not where you want to start these fights. They go up for the chain CC, but don't kill Yone. How do they not kill Yone? I'm... That's actually kind of perplexing. They don't have enough Yone there. Is it, is it Locket here from Sejuani? Zeke's holding down space, any amount of stuns. The fact that, that he was able to get out of that. is pretty wild. And that certainly sealed the fate for the rest of the fight, right? Any amount of extra time spent there. But now they're going to do the same thing they did before. Try to exploit these side laners. We're making proactive plays. I love how Alistar is moving together with Skarner. Bash brothers right here. These two are moving together, making plays side by side on the map. A little bit of fly quest. I'm seeing a little bit of fly quest macro here. This side to side, right? Look where the spawns are. So, and look where the next objective is. It's Baron and it's top side. Now they are giving camps over to the carries. This is another way to do it, right? You just give maximum gold to all your carries. But you're gonna see the team bring more of their strength to, to this side if they're continuing in that play. This pendulum macro would mean send usually Jin, uh, Bin on Jax to the weak side and then go play strong side over here. Bring your Alistar and your Skarner. Bring people over to this side of the map to go collect on this and collect on this. Now, obviously, Baron's going to be easier said than done. There's a lot of steps to be, to be had there. But expect them to move their presence onto this side of the map. Now, if you're Weibo and you're anticipating that, maybe you can come over. All right, there we go. Jack's on the bot side. Maybe you can come over and punish and say, you know what? We're going to send two mages over here or mage plus tank, which is what they have. Rumble plus Sejuani. Rumble, Sejuani, and Maokai even potentially. But no, really it could be Rumble, Ezreal, and Sejuani is more than enough. Send, send Maokai over with the Yone and see if you can make a play on the Jacks. Maybe even do it with two, right? Maybe you just threaten with Ezreal and 
rumble and say that you can you can deal enough damage into the pit if it comes down into a situation where you're wondering how long you have to create this protracted siege if you have to defend against a play on the other side. Maybe you can get a play where you kill Jax if you ever kill Jax here on the sideline, especially in this advanced position, then you'll have a tremendous advantage. And right now, that's been the missing link for Weibo in these end games. Everything's about stock standard, push up mid, go for beach vision, right? Just hide, hide in this area and look for an opening as you find it. I'm sure they have team fight plays and positions that they're calling out, but it feels like it hasn't been dynamic enough. I would love to see them do what BLG just did, which is send three people to the side lane, defend with the minimum, and like, for example, use a rumble ult against a wave right here. Ezreal uses ult on the wave, go here, send three people, kill the jacks. You've held off against the Baron long enough. If you can go take that, then you could turn around and put Sejuani and, and Yone on the dragon, try to pick it up for free while never giving up the Baron using that rumble and Ezreal damage. It's just an example of something that, that they could try. It just feels like we haven't gotten enough from them. All right, lines of scrimmage drawn the same way as they have. Double control wards, single control wards. I actually don't like that he moved it over. He moved it into this pit saying, we're going to take this. Uh, so they give up this vision. They're going to hold it now with their bodies. This is battle wards. Light on Ezreal has to come back over to pick the wave, which means that they're now just giving up that ward. Are they going to take this fight? This is just Sejuani. He doesn't scoop over the wall, so he doesn't get that much. Jax needs to jump into the pit, ends up getting knocked back. They're trying to get this damage, but guys, they're putting so much damage onto Tarzan, the tank. We're going to see maybe Light carries this fight again. Akali rips apart the Ezreal. Maybe that's why they have the Akali to do that. Crisp is not a threat. Skarno's going to be able to chase him down. They end up delaying the contest, saying that they're going to use any amount of cooldowns trying to burst the dragon. They take the fight. So what I was saying here with this, they took out their wards from this contest push and moved it into this one, right? Normally you have this line of scrimmage, blue versus red, and red team gets to take this side because then they get to go back and fight their turret. Blue team gets to take this side because it's easier to maneuver through the walls, right? When you take your control ward out here and put it into here, you're basically claiming, all right, now's our time. We are committing to this bush, which is a little bit further out, and we're committing to this dragon, they can take the fight to us if they want us. Were they looking for it? Is that the actual fight that they were looking to capture on? Obviously, the results don't suggest that that was the case, but let's take a peek right here. Wards come out, Skarner comes in, it challenges the smite. There are smites down, so you have an extra combat effect now. Jump coming in, Jax goes in but gets knocked up, ends up only getting one person with his stun. Elk jumping out the back of the pit. He's doing some amount of damage. Yeah, there's the difference. The fact that he was able to continue dealing damage was huge. Was huge. Ezreal wants that slow build up to a fight. Build up your stacks. Constantly chunk people out with Q. Kaiso wants that explosive fight. When you decide that, hey, we're going to take this bush and we're taking the dragon right now, you're playing out of Ezreal's hands and into Kaiso's hands. And then it becomes a compositional difference for how you're going to do it. I don't know. Are they going to find a better angle? I can't think of one right now based on where, where the gold totals are at, what they're trying to do. Nice job by Jahu trying to get some space here. Ends up getting out for himself. Does have to blow his ultimate down. Breathe is going to come in, potentially use an ultimate to try to get this wave out. They're probably going to hold it because everything needs to be put in on the team fight basket. They're down almost 3k gold and they're about to give up that mid lane turret. And they're about to give up that bot lane. If those two things fall, that's the end of the fight. Alistar says, I've got the angle. Hold on, the stun comes out. Kaisa's way outside the fight. So that means it's just going to be Alistar for turret. That's a trade that Weibo's happy to take. Now, with Alistar off the map, how much can they get done for themselves? I expect them to take this entire quadrant, right? And they're going to play for this amount of strength. Let Jax have the bot side. Match him with the minimum amount that says you can't take my base and see if he can take everything. It looks like BLG is saying, no, we actually want to force down here. We expect you to go to our top side. So we're going to answer by going bot and saying that we'll take this to you because we have the Baron buff. But hold on, they're getting wrapped on. Weibo says we've got the fight. We've got teleport coming in. Jax is picking up new resources, but this may be tough. No, they get enough on the front and back end of the fight. Beautifully fought by BLG. My goodness. What great answers, right? So the standard play after getting that pick, your number's up. You say, okay, I'd like to take 
just an extra meridian, right? An extra 10% of the map, maybe even give you this and say, I can take all of these things and maybe take this turret as well. BLG realizing we're down a number, whichever direction they go, we immediately go opposite. We're not gonna try to contest you because we're down. If we try to answer you, we're just going to lose. So instead we counter you and go to the other side, force the fight on that side. Maybe we can get something on, on our, our own terms. And the fact that Yone was over here meant that they had a really syncopated position to start this fight. Yone's wondering what's his best angle into the fight. Team's coming through. Lingering vision, you can see that the advantage was to BLG. I love watching BLG team fight and making these calls. All right, so here's the standoff. The upfront, oh, that's why. Jiao. I didn't see it. That's such a feed. Walking through this angle. He's going to be so disappointed in himself. I did not see that motion, but that explains everything. If you get a free kill on Yone, then yeah, absolutely, you get the rest of it. That's wild. So you have to take the safest approach there. You know that your team's leaving, and you don't know where the enemies are. You cannot walk into an area in front of a contested bush. I feel, I feel badly for Jiahu. All right, big ultimate. It's into the Skarner ultimate. BLG is feeling very good with their gold lead right now, though. They get the kill on the Crisp to start. They're going to reconsolidate the fight right to left. Light is not dealing nearly enough damage in this front to back, and that's kind of what we expect from Ezreal. Just not enough. It's not Smolder, right? Like, Smolder's the difference. You, It's like they banned away Smolder because they didn't want to get Yone countered by Smolder, and they ended up taking Smolder away from, their, from themselves. BLG looks fantastic. They look so good. They look like they're ready for Worlds. This team was built to win Worlds. Let's not forget this, guys. This team was one step away. They were on the doorstep. They got it robbed from them by, from Weibo. And since their very first game, they've shown icons up. As they're beating Top Esports, we're coming for you, T1. And at this point, now they get to watch tom tomorrow. And I think, whereas Genji might have watched the T1 match last weekend, Sunday to, to Saturday, they might have been watching with some amount of we need to prepare for this team. And it might have made them slightly weaker against FlyQuest. Whereas FlyQuest can watch that game gleefully and say, okay, we're watching, we're enjoying, that's great, but my eyes are still on Genji. Billy Billy is going to get to watch tomorrow's match with freedom. We've done our job, we're coming, we've prepared for this, we don't care who comes to us. I hope it's T1, but let's watch this game with the idea of Okay, you're next. We'll take you out next. They look so strong, and they've added the strongest player that has ever played in China to their roster. Right? Knight is that guy. He is him. Is it going to be enough to beat Faker, though? Like, <laughs> that's the question. I mean, Faker, T1 versus Genji. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of preparation for tomorrow's match. We'll be, we'll be streaming live 9 a.m. tomorrow, Eastern Time. T1 came into this tournament being described as very wavering, that they've had a lot of weaknesses. A lot of things have made this team feel weaker. They're definitely not as strong as they were. Oh my goodness, now that world, suddenly they're playing super well. Why did that happen? I think people forgot that this team got cyber attacked all year long. This T1 team is, kinda, is going to come into this match not only being world champions, but having had to deal with the most difficult split that they've ever had, where they literally could not even play games. They had to get like random spare accounts to try to get any amount of scrimmaging done because their, their venue, their office was getting hacked over and over and over and getting DDoSed, whatever it was. This team could not practice. They could not play. Of course, they're going to be worse during the regular season. Excellent. There has got to be such a weight. Like, it almost makes me cry just thinking about it. The amount of weight that is lifted when you take someone that's had you in a chokehold all season, these hackers, you've been fighting through that, and now it's gone. Hopefully it doesn't over-express itself in its freedom. I think T1 is going to handle this like it's task, mission at hand. Here's our game plan. We're going to go. Genji is going to bring it. 
they're going to bring the highest level of League of Legends that maybe we've ever seen, maybe even higher than BLG brought today. They know that they need to do that because the shot calls and the adaptations from Faker are going to be elite. They are going to be apex, the best that they can do. They have to outplay on an individual level. Chovy wants it so badly. He knows that he's playing the game at the highest level individually that anyone has ever played it. And yet no one calls him the best because Faker's still there. The only thing that will allow him to surpass Faker as the actual undisputed best player is to beat him in the world championships. And I don't envy this task, but if you're Chovy trying to prove yourself, you have to go play the best player that Korea and the world has ever seen and then you're going to play against Knight, the best player to ever come out of China. So your task, this, I mean, it is wild to think how good these players are in the mid lane, how they've inspired a generation of players. I'm here for it. I'm pumped for it. I hope you guys are too. I'm going to see you tomorrow at those games. Make sure you guys drop a like and a sub subscribe. It helps us keep this content coming. And uh, we're here for it. I believe. Make us believe. I believe. This is the highest level of League of Legends that we've seen on the world stage and it's going to continue. All signs show that we're going to have an absolute fireworks match tomorrow, and we're going to have a fireworks match next Saturday.